we all, Tim, Mike, and I all went to high school and junior high school together. Um, I remember Mike listening to a lot of like Overkill, uh, Napalm Death, Death, uh, Merciful Fate. Tim, much of the same, Merciful Fate. Um, um, we all had like a little, you know, our little closet bands, our little closet glam. I know Tim was had a little crew in his back pocket. Um, I mean, fuck, you want to talk about glam? I mean, I went from like, Jesus Christ, listening to, uh, you know, Guns N' Roses and fucking, and no disrespect to Guns N' Roses, but, you know, hard rock to some, uh, a buddy of mine accidentally leaving a copy of Rain and Blood at my house. And, you know, it was on cassette tape. I think I wore the tape out within 24 hours. I gave it back to him, and it played at, like, half the speed because the tape was so stretched. Um, for me, I mean, I, like, my staples were always metal-wise. You know, everybody was listening to, you know, Metallica. And, you know, Justice for All came out. We were all fucking banging that shit. Um, I had a little affinity to, like, Iron Maiden. Um, but at the same time, like, personally, I was listening to a lot of Rush, uh, I was listening to, uh, you know, my brother was really got me into prog rock, old Genesis, Peter Gabriel Genesis. Um, hey, I've, I've heard stories over the years, people saying that um, you guys were offered big deals or some, you know, you labels were interested in you guys. I've heard so many stories. We did showcases for like Warner Brothers and, oh, dude, it was awesome. Casey fucking was mad. I don't know. All right, Casey said he was macking on the girl, the uh, the guys, the the rep from Warner Brothers' girlfriend. The rep came up to me. It was at CBGB's. The rep came up to me. He goes, "Dude, show's amazing. Singer's a fucking asshole." And walked away from me. And I was like, oh, "That was great. That was better getting signed to Warner Brothers." <laughs> but. At this, you know, it was cool. At the same time, like we were like kind of flirting with the idea of playing showcases. People around us, whether it was like smaller labels or bigger labels, were all getting signed, and they were all getting fucked over. They're all like, you know, being you know, pro- big promises, and as soon as they signed on the dotted line, they were like miserable. Oh yeah. And we're like, we just put out two albums on our own. You know, we had a little help and financing from family, uh, Mike's, Mike's grandfather, uh, gave us a large sum of money that he gave us like a year to pay back. We paid him back in like two months. You know, it was like, here you go. You know, thank you so much with a little interest. Um, we're like, you know, we're doing this on our own. Do we, do we even want a label? Do we need a label right now? You know, we were, we were just a bunch of kids just, you know, traveling from, you know, having a good time traveling around in a beat up old van that fucking leaked literally two quarts of oil every fucking half, you know, every three hour trip. It was, it was pathetic and it was beautiful. <laughs> Usually they go hand in hand, actually. I love that. Scott when the kite string pops I don't think any of us could stop listening to that album but that was all I think that was all post uh, at least after we had already recorded uh, nine ways I mean yeah we I mean we were turned on to that but like you know no it was right around the time we were recording nine ways because their uh, their new album was coming out we knew they were gonna be touring and we we're begging uh, Ted, the local promoter, were like, please, if they come up here, we want to play with them. Please, 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 please. And our CD release, we did a two-show CD release party uh, for Nine Ways, and uh, we got to play with Acidbath on the second show. You know, true to form, without any CDs for the CD release party, but that's the way that fucking show goes. But it was awesome. They were, I was so fucking, like, stoked to be able to see them. Um... Really, really cool. Uh, influences leading up to, we were all over the place. Uh, Casey was like, uh, 
definitely like more into uh i'd say uh, hardcore and like old school metal yeah. mike tim you know they grew i think they grew up with maybe not mike but you know tim's dad um awesome awesome guy never missed a show by the way uh. um Real awesome. He actually looks like he's. We always told him he looks like he's a butler. Uh, in the Sabbath, you know, Tim grew up listening to the Sabbath. I was. We had already put out um, "Pain Is Truth." I was in college um, in Rhode Island doing my culinary arts thing, and I was writing songs uh, for Nine Ways. And it was uh, my second year, so let's see, 90, 97. So right the year that we recorded uh, Nine Ways. And um, so we all came back from Christmas break, and one of my friends came back with, like, a whole sheet of acid. And it was like, oh, fucking awesome. And our first day back to class, we had a snow day. No class. So we're like, fucking sweet. Bust out that acid, man. Let's fucking party. And we all had our Christmas presents. Somebody had a Jenga and we're fucking tripping balls. And one of my roommates got the Black Sabbath box set. And everybody started talking. My roommates were like, they were all over the board. I had one really cool roommate that was into like Sick of It All and uh, Gutter Mouth. You know, he, he had some like weird, uh, you know, punk and hardcore interests. And we're all talking about Black, or they were all talking about Black Sabbath. And they kind of asked me, and they were like, so, you know, what's your favorite Black Sabbath album? And, you know, I was probably the most metal dude out of all of them. And I looked at all of them, I'm like, honestly, I've never really listened to Black Sabbath. Like, I know War Pigs, I know Paranoid, but I've never really sat down and listened to Black Sabbath. And they were like, what the fuck do you mean? You know, it's fucking Black Sabbath. And it's like saying you don't know the Beatles. And I was just like, yeah. Never, I got I got Blizzard of Oz for Easter one year. I listened to Ozzy. I just never listened to Black Sabbath. Just never did. I don't know why. Just never had that. It was never, and uh, it wasn't until ninety seven. Day off from school, tripping my balls off, and I listened to every fucking album, mostly playing Jenga, and. That was like it for me. I mean, I've been like fucking obsessed ever since. But um, it's one of those damn. Why haven't I been another one of those? Why haven't I been listening to this the whole entire fucking time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, but never, never listened to Sabbath until I was you know like twenty, twenty years old. Weird. I think <laughs> Um, Tim Tim wasn't involved at the time, but Mike and I were roommates, and we had Casey come over once in a while, and we'd uh, we'd throw down some really weird, non-metal, you know, definitely weird psychedelic, you know, hard rock but psychedelic shit. It was kind of the precursor to what Mike and I did with uh, Sherwood with the violent sequence. Really, but um, like there was actually one one song that uh, Casey. Uh, Originally, it was this riff that we came up with that we played without even a drummer, and uh, Casey did vocals too. And we, you know, we went to him and we're like, "Listen, we want to record this song. Um, you know, we did this with you. You know, you were definitely an influence on what we did. Is it, you know, is it cool if we, you know, use some of the melodic?" And he was like, "Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, we're all we're all brothers, and we all know it's like this kind of intangible medium that we're all, you know, tooling around with." But um. But something, you just reminded me of something, the, um, not the first practice, we just had our first practice, but we had a little meeting before that first practice, and I was talking with Tim, and um, there was just, I don't know, so much was going on, so many, you know, ideas, and, um, you know, Tim said to me, he goes, you know, none of us, he goes, you're not a great guitar player, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm a very sloppy guitar player, he goes, I'm not a great drummer, I'm like, no, you're a fucking wicked sloppy drummer, and, you know, Casey, you know, holding notes, he's not like this. He's, he's no Coverdale. He's no Pitch Perfect, you know. But 
you know, the sum of the whole is greater than the individual parts. Yeah. You know, we all come together. What we put out is better than any of us could do yeah. on our own. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's where it's like, you know, that's what I miss. Yeah. Um, I don't think there should be anything holding you guys back. I will do all of my power uh, to support you guys through this, um, I guess, uh, reconnection phase mm-hmm. and uh, rediscovery of, uh, you know, the, the connection that you guys uh, once had and will always have. Yeah, it's like when we got together, and it's, it, it's bizarre. I've been texting. I'm always, I feel bad because, you know, Mike... He's he's like the lost brother. He's not here right now. I'm like yeah. every practice. I'm like, I wish you were fucking here, you Pollock. He's like, all oh, my Pollock, and I'm like, fucking Pollock. <laughs> and um, you know, but it's funny. I, I say to him, I'm like, you know, it's like the old jokes. But some we've 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 experienced individually so much in the last 13 years. It's like the same sense of fucking hu- the same sense of humor. We're still busting each other's balls, but we've got so much new material. To bust each other's balls with. So amazing. <laughs> you know? I mean, you have... Uh, I mean, it's... I do believe in, you know, chemistry. Like, Casey and I, even throughout the years, I mean, we've all remained friends. Sometimes long periods of time go without talking, but when we get together, um, it's a, it's always awesome. We get together and somebody has an instrument in their hand. Something always like, oh, I just want to show you this little thing. And many times, Casey and I have sat down in the past and I've played something, and he'll start singing something. I'll start doing a harmony over the top of it, and it's like, that's what chemistry is. When you can sit down with somebody you haven't actually physically seen in six, eight months, start playing something that they've heard for the first time, where they're injecting themselves immediately into it, and not only just freestyling, like, yeah, it was okay. It's like, wow. That's really fucking good, man. Fuck. Why didn't I... You know, and I'm like, immediately, my my mind, I'm like, why didn't I think of doing a melody like that on there? It's, you know, it's different perspectives of a different medium, you know? And I, the other night, I mean, just sitting down for our first, our very first practice, um, you know, we were just fucking around, like, uh, getting into doing a show. We want to, you know, we're trying to work on getting it back to where we were. Casey and I are already fucking experimenting with like harmonies. I'm like, all right, this is fun and all. Let's not do this at the show, but you know, it's just like the art, the artist in us. We're like always like trying to, like, you know, ne- it's never finished. You're like always trying to add a little something on and you know make more of of what we where we've left off. Casey is the only one of us who's been playing. The entire time. I mean, he's always. We've, you know, we've. The rest of us have gone in and out of playing live and playing shows. All of us have. But Casey's like the one constant. Like, if there's anybody who's in shape to get up and fucking destroy again, it's this guy. The thing I'll share with you. Um, I only got this because uh, Tim. And this all, this whole reunion, more or less, came through. Uh, our drummer Tim, his his mom passed away uh, a few weeks ago, and literally us all talking, kind of sort. We practiced at Tim's house. That was our our practice room. Was their back porch. We call, we had our name for our practice room, Strawberry Fields. This is the wall. This is actually the wallpaper. I I went over to uh, Tim's dad's house to see him, see how he was doing. Cause I haven't seen him in literally like twelve years until. The funeral services but we went over the other day and I went back into the practice room and it's filled with all their ceramics and they have ceramic studio but it was like the same carpeting and the same wallpaper that's what we got to look at